All right, buddy. I think we're uh, we're all set up here, and we're we're live, and we're ready to go. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, welcome, Jay, and uh, welcome everybody to our Yamniska Guide Talk. Uh, today we're having a chat about all the latest, greatest gear coming out from Patagonia and Petzl, and uh, I'm pretty happy to have uh, Jason Billings along board with us. Uh, Jason works for Onward Up, which is a um, agency that represents a ton of uh, fantastic outdoor brands, including Patagonia and uh, Petzl, which we'll be talking about today. Um, yeah, Jason's also a, a guide for Yam. Uh, he's an IFMGA mountain guide, so, so he brings a lot to the, the table when it comes to not only traveling and working in the mountains, um, but uh, also uh, he knows a ton about uh, the brands and and the gear and what everybody's after rolling into the winter. Um, so yeah, really happy to have Jason on board with us today. He's been a good friend of mine for, for many, many years and, and uh, yeah, done some climbing together and now look at us go on Facebook Live. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Awesome, I'm good, thanks, Tim. Yeah, thanks for the intro. Nice to virtually yeah. be here with you. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. He's a sign of our times. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, totally. We're, we're only a couple blocks away, you know, but uh, <laughs> here we are. We're together in spirit. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, you know, um, it, it's great to be here and chat with everybody. And, uh, you know, obviously with Patagonia and Petzl, there's, you know, there's lots going on and, um, you know, all the activities that, you know, you guys are doing in the mountains and taking folks out is really like gear intensive you know, whether it's like ice climbing or ski touring or whatever. So yeah, we kind of thought, um, you know, I chat about a few of the new things, you know, that um, uh, your, your guests might be interested or, or if there's any guides that are listening, you know, and uh, also if anybody has any questions, you know, uh, out there in Facebook world, um, just like chime in in the comments, I think, hey, is that? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If people uh, want to ask us questions throughout, uh, all of, I should hopefully see them pop up in the comments section and then I can direct them back to, to you or, or to myself. Um, you know, I, I guess, Jay, like, you know, maybe it's worth just filling people in on the, the history with Patagonia and, uh, and Yam right out the gates and, and how we've come to, to work together and, um, um, you know, how this relationship started and, um, you know, how, how, how well we've, we've done working together because we're, as guys working at Yam, I can tell you that, you know, we're ecstatic about being in, in Patagonia clothes and, it definitely meets our standards for for the harsh environments that we put them through on a on a daily basis with all the guiding that we do, whether it's you know um, working as a as a hiking guide um, all the way to to working as a, an alpine guide in some of the the harshest environments around the world. Totally, yeah, for sure. I'd be happy to. You know, so um, onward up started working with yeah Nesca almost a decade ago, and it kind of started with uh, Petzl. Um, so you know, the idea was to. Um, provide the guests um, with really high quality equipment, you know, that YAM, you know, provides, uh, you know, typically uh, free of charge when they sign up for a program. So when a guest signs up, you know, they know that they're going to get kind of the most current, um, you know, latest, you know, technical equipment, whether it's crampons, ice axes, harness, helmets, et cetera. And, um, and then also to, you know, kind of offer that to the guides as well, who, you know, like you guys go through gear, you know, pretty quickly uh, with like the, the day in day out use, you know, and to be able to, you know, have, um, you know, the latest stuff available for you guys. And then about seven years ago, um, you know, uh, we kind of started working with Yamneska on the clothing side of things with, with Patagonia. And, um, you know, Yamneska became, uh, you know, one of the, the very few companies um, that partner with Patagonia as a Pataguide company. Um, so it's actually like Yamnesco yeah, was the only one in Canada. And, um, you know, as part of that, you know, we provide uh, uniform pieces and it's pretty cool because like, you know, yourself or, you know, like Jesse, one of the other directors can, you know, come over to the Onward Up office and we can show you everything that's, that's you know, on the cutting edge and, you know, you, you can try it on and um, learn all about the tech and you could actually like pick out things specifically, you know, for the different like disciplines. It's like, okay, so our ski guides, you know, this would probably work really good. And, and these pants, you know, the hiking guides, this kit's better. And um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, what's been going on for the last, you know, you know, 10 years uh, or so kind of thing. 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I can tell you that, uh, you know, all of the guides over here at Yam have really, um, you know, appreciated wearing Patagonia clothing for, for that many years. And, um, you know, it really does, you know, it sounds like a sales pitch here, but, you know, you know, from, from somebody who's out in the mountains and guiding all the time and, and, you know, wearing this type of clothing, you know, call it like, you know, 150 to 200 days a year, it really does stand up um, to, to the environment that we're, that we're putting it to the, you know, putting it through the test. So, you know, as a, as a user and a consumer, I can say that, you know, it, it does really work for, for what we need it to, to do. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, I always like remind the guys down at Patagonia headquarters, it's like, you know, these guys are like our, you know, some of our best product testers, right? Because you can take stuff out and like yeah. put it through the ringer and then we give that feedback to them so they can like help things improve, you know? So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we've been giving lots of feedback back to you guys and we've seen that feedback come through and in, in the clothing when it comes out and, you know, it changes, you know, seasonally. So it's been, yeah, super appreciated. And yeah, it's been awesome. So, you totally. know, yeah. What, what's going on? Like, wh what should I get this winter, Jay? What's going to get me through the next six months? That, that's right. what I want to know. Let me tell you, Timmy. So, you know, uh, the first thing I'll talk about is a new product and um, it's called the DOS Light Parka. And uh, Tim, you know, because I think you just got one and you've been using it, you know, a bit uh, out in the Alpine, you know, this would, uh, this fall, I guess. And I've been using yeah. one. I grabbed the sample, you know, and used it all last winter for, for ski touring and, and that yeah. kind of thing. So this is it right here. And um, this, you know, this really represents like kind of the cutting edge of fabric and insulation technologies that are kind of out there in the world. And so the insulation that's inside this, we call this plumophil. And this is something that Patagonia, you know, kind of um, developed in the beginning. And what plumophil is, is it's synthetic, right? So that means if it gets wet, it's going to keep you warm or it's going to dry really quickly. Um, but it also has kind of the good properties of down, right? And the good properties of down are really lightweight and really, really compressible. And so it's, it's been uh, kind of a challenge over the years to try and find something that kind of marries the two together, right? And so we take 65 grams of that, you know, which is, you know, a fair amount. And then the cool thing about the DOS light is that we use this really high tech shell fabric, okay? So this yeah. is a nylon ripstop fabric. And what that means is like, um, when you look at it really closely, it kind of has like a grid pattern on it. So it's really yeah. a great resistant, even though it's like, paper thin and it has yeah. a PU coating like a polyurethane coating as well as what's called a durable water repellent finish on the outside. So this is actually um, very, very, very water resistant while being like ultra, ultra lightweight. Um, yeah. It's also windproof as well. So yeah, awesome. Yeah, 320 grams. It's not very heavy, but it's really, really warm for the weight. And I don't know, maybe you can relate like some of your experiences over the last month kind of thing using it. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I've had mine for probably, yeah, I'll call it a month or a month and a half. And I've been using it alpine guiding um, for the most part. Definitely, you know, I'm going to be carrying it with me throughout the winter. Um, you know, what I really like about this jacket is um, how packable it is. And um, so for me, the way I've actually been packing this jacket is I roll the whole jacket up into the hood. And then I can actually fit this inside my helmet when it goes in my pack, Jay. So it's like, yeah. for me, for the size of the jacket and the durability of it and what I need it for, that's a super important factor for me is how am I going to keep everything as tight as I can, you know, within a 35, 40 liter pack. And that thing fits in, in my helmet and that's how I've been packing it into my backpack. So I'm, I'm really happy with, with that element of the jacket as well as the warmth factor and um, the breathability on it, I, I found was, was really good as well. So, yeah. you know, I definitely sort of dragged it, dragged it through some rock climbing pitches um, and, um, you know, been stacking ropes on it and everything else. And I don't even have any nicks in, in the jacket or anything like that so far. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. Yeah, it's a great product, good, great piece. Yeah, I'd right. highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll just try and show um, the Facebook world out there how good that water repellent treatment works. So without pouring water on my computer, um, I'm just gonna kind of pour some on here. 
Okay, so you can see that it, it really just runs off, right? Like it just beads up and it just runs right off and um, it doesn't soak through that fabric. So even if, you know, you're in a big snowstorm or, um, you know, a, a dripping ice climb or something like that, you know, it's gonna keep it dry. Yeah, right on. And uh, just when you're that back up there, I've, <laughs> I have a question from Mike Johnson. And uh, sure. I don't think it's related not related to you or I, but he he wants to know what it's like to work with the great and powerful Dara McGuire. And uh, all I got to say, Mike, is it's a dream come true. And uh, every day I get to work with Dara is, uh, is a great day in the mountains, buddy. Thanks for the question. <laughs> keep the questions coming. <laughs> yeah, keep them coming. Totally. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, I guess the, the other thing that I brought, which I'm really excited about, which is also new for this fall, is kind of like the big brother to the DOS light. So this is the new DOS parka right here. And you know, over the years, the DOS parka, um, so just for the viewers, DOS, D-A-S, stands for dead airspace, okay, which is how all these puffy jackets work, right? Um, you know, the yeah. DOS parka has been a pretty iconic piece, you know, you see, you know, photos of um, you know, climbs on Nanga Parbat and uh, House Peak and the Rockies and, you know, people are wearing the DOS parka. And so this new one is, is pretty cool. It has that same, like, really high-tech shell fabric that's on the DOS light. And then this one has uh, twice the insulation of this one here, right? So it's 133 grams throughout the whole body. Yep. And um, in addition, in the torso, so just kind of where you want to have that core warmth, it has 40 yeah. grams of this, uh, this Primaloft insulation that's called CrossCore, okay? And this is really like the, the kind of cutting edge of insulation technology. So yeah. this CrossCore Primaloft uses um, a material called Aerogel, okay, which is infused yeah. in the fibers. And Aerogel comes from uh, like the NASA world, so they put it in spacesuits to insulate like astronauts. And it's 95% yeah. air, okay? Yeah. And so it is uh, the lightest solid material known to man, okay? And because it is so much uh, of, of, you know, its component is air, it's like the ultimate insulator, okay? Great. So like super high tech stuff, but you have something that is, is incredibly warm belay parka, but it's about 20% lighter than the previous DOS parka version. Which is and I, I, know for, I know for us over here, um, you know, when we were looking at the product that was coming out, I mean, we, we see it, we saw this last year. Yeah. But I know a lot of the reaction over here was, thank you for bringing back the DOS parka. Totally. The, you know, yeah, the older one was, you know, a favorite piece amongst all the guides here. Totally. And it went away for a couple of years while we developed this new one. And, you know, I think it was, it was really missed for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So looking good, but yeah, thanks, man. Hey, I haven't even, I just got this uh, about a month ago, so it hasn't been cold enough to wear it yet. But this is what I'm going to wear when it's really cold and I'm standing around at a long belay, you know, um, yeah. dripping ice climb. Uh, if I'm ski touring in really cold temperatures where it's like this, this is probably not going to cut it. I need something that's like, you know, really, really warm, but it's still going to yeah. keep it warm if it gets wet or dry quickly, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's also got the zipper at the bottom, right? So if you're wearing the harness you can just zip it up to throw it on as a belay jacket that's right yeah so both of these have the two-way zipper so you can yeah. uh, zip it up to access like your belay device um if needed yeah yeah totally yeah, yeah. um right yeah and then you know i guess a couple things to talk about with those pieces is that the insulation that's inside them right uh, that polyester yeah. insulation is recycled which is okay pretty cool and you know um this, this is becoming more and more important, I think, as uh, people are concerned about the environment and, you know, what's happening to, you know, the places that we go and play and stuff like that. And now that we can build these really like high tech pieces using basically what is waste, right? So pop bottles and, you know, yogurt containers and things like that. And we can remove that from the waste stream and turn it into a really, really high performing insulation. So nowadays there's no compromise you know, between having something that's recycled and like lower impact and, you know, really, really high performance, which is like really cool to see that in yeah. these pieces. That's amazing. Totally. Yeah. 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 We, we had a question come up here. Um, 
What's your favorite piece? I don't well, know if that's favorite, the right to My favorite Pat probably... Tony piece. You know, um, it, it would probably be the Houdini. And the Houdini is a, an ultralight uh, wind shell. I'm just looking if I, uh, if I have one here. I do. Um, awesome. This, this is a, a women's one here, but um, this is a, a really, really lightweight windshell. It weighs about uh, just a few ounces. It stuffs into its own yep. pocket and it's, it's about the size of your fist. It's yep. totally windproof. And it has that same durable water repellent treatment that's on these jackets. So it can definitely handle like a passing shower and that kind of thing. Yeah. And this is something that I'll take mountain biking, trail running, alpine rock climbing, you know, for like the windy ridges and belays even ski touring, you could like okay. stuff in your pocket, basically. And when the wind picks up, you can deploy it and throw it on. And it's not very expensive. Um, you know. Yeah. yeah. That'd probably yeah. be my one, you know, I got lots of favorites, but that's one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's it. I, I have one of those as well. I, I use it for the same things you use it for. Um, I think, you know, if I was to pick out one piece that I've been using um, more than any, like shell jacket, I guess, would be the Ascensionist jacket. And uh, you know, for me, for there's a bunch of years where I pretty much, I wrote Gore-Tex off unless it was slashing rain, um, borderline like about to hide underneath the tarp sort yeah. of deal. And I found Gore-Tex for me, it never breathed. It was always steamy and foggy and it just, it never really felt like a great layer. But the Ascensionist jacket to me was finally a lightweight Gore-Tex shell um, that actually breathes. I mean, I got I got one right here. Um, you know, it looks like it breathes all the rage right now as far as colors go. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, be yeah, again, like, you know, super lightweight, almost like a paper thin style jacket that folds up into, into nothing into my pack. And then as far as, I actually find myself wearing this more than not wearing it these days. Um, even as a, as a bit of a wind shell, more of an all around sort of go to one shell jacket because it actually breathes and you can actually wear the jacket as opposed to just having it in the bottom of your bag for the, the super gnarly weather that you get stuck in a couple of times a year. So totally. this, is, this is my go to. This, this never leaves my pack, actually. This is always with me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's a good example of how far fabrics have come, you know. So that's, um, you know, a, a special gore text fabric that has a special backer on it, which really helps with the breathability. And the face fabric is yep. really tough, but very thin. So it can be really packable and you're just gonna bring it with you all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Always. yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, this is fun. What have you got for me? Well, you know, I brought one more thing that again is like new for this fall, but I was testing it out all last winter ski touring. And that's the new Dissensionist pack. And um, okay. totally redesigned. And I'll try and kind of get it set up so you guys can see it pretty good. Um, so all new material. So this is um, a 420 denier recycled nylon. So again, recycled, which is pretty cool. But what that means, like 420 denier, is um, it has a really high thread count. So it's really, really abrasion resistant. And it's really weather resistant. So this thing is going to take a beating and last a really long time. But it doesn't make the pack super heavy. Um, some other things that I really love about it, got to this box here, is um, it has a really big tools compartment in the front here, um, so it can fit, you know, a full-sized, you know, 320 centimeter probe, you know, a full-size shovel. Um, it's got room for your snow saw in there, so like quick access when you're digging pits and stuff. Um, yep. There is side access, which is great. So if you just need to grab like your thermos or your DOS light or something like that, you can get in there super easy. Um, super comfy back panel that sheds snow really well. So if you happen to throw it down, you know, when you're taking a break, um, you can just brush the snow right off and like stay dry. And then um, there's a big roll top closure. So if you got a rope, let's say you're heading up onto the glacier, um, you can put that over the top. And then it's really easy to get in there and you could overfill it too, you know? So let's say you're doing like one night at the hut or something like that. You could kind of like overfill it and then you get really good weather skill when you roll it down. You know, it carries super well, like it's really comfortable and um, 
yeah, it comes in a 40 liter size and a 32. So I use that 40 liter, you know, like for guiding and stuff like that. Um, there's just yep. a little more room if you're heading out of the glaciers. So yeah, pretty stoked about this, uh, this new dissensionist pack. I think they kind of like nailed it with uh, all the changes and stuff like that. Great on. Totally. Yeah, yeah. That looks great. yeah. I've been using the older one for uh, about three winters now and I, I, I like the old one. So I'm excited to give this one a burn. Totally for sure. Yeah. Um, great on. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of a few, a few of the kind of new, uh, the new things that, you know, I'm, I'm super stoked about with, with Patagonia for, uh, for the yep. fall. Right on. Sweet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I guess let, moving on, you know, that uh, to, to the Petzl world and, you know, I, I got to, you know, I, I think a common question that we get over here often, whether it's summer mountaineering or ice climbing, is um, if I want to buy one crampon, you know, what's what's the best crampon? And you know, my typical answer to that would be, well, ideally you would have a quiver of crampon, right? So oh. you'd have a summer mountaineering crampon, you'd have an ice climbing crampon, you know, like a bit of a a bit of a, a mono point crampon, um, you know, for some harder mixed climbing. So a bit of a quiver. Um, and I know Petzl's got some pretty cool stuff going on in the crampon world these days. So what do you got? What, yeah, if, totally. if I could buy one you know, to sort of get me through everything, what would you recommend? Yeah, so um, there's kind of two two parts to that question, I guess. So, you know, regardless of, um, you know, what you're doing with your crampons, you got to start with one pair, yeah. right? You know, you go in the store and you got you to pick something. And if I was just going to pick yeah. one crampon to go ice climbing, mix climbing, and then kind of mountaineering, alpine climbing in the summer, and have something that does all those things like, quite well, um, it would be the Lynx, yeah. okay. which is, uh, you know, this is the crampon that you guys have in your fleet, you know, for, for mm -hmm. guest use. And, um, you know, the nice thing about the Lynx is that it's really modular. So, um, you know, in the box, it comes with this style of bale in the front, which is good for, you know, boots that don't have a welt or if the welt is worn off, but it also comes with the more technical like wire bale. In the box, okay, so you can switch yeah. it out. The points are modular, so you can switch to monopoint if you're mixed climbing, or you can move them in or out so you get a perfect fit with your boots. And then the point yeah. configuration, the way they design the points, um, yeah. kind of, you know, it, they're they're sort of pointed so that you get really good performance on like 50 degree ice faces, and you're trying to keep your crampons flat so that your calves yeah. aren't like exploding. But then also, if you get on the mixed climbs and you're kind of, you know, raking with your crampon on the rock or something like that, um, you know, you kind of have those types of points as well. Um, it also comes with the bag, which is handy. It's a really durable crampon bag. So you can throw these in the bottom of your pack and not shred your, your nice, uh, you know, Das Parker or whatever. Um, so if I was going to do one, that would be it. But even better would be what if I could have like the perfect crampon for each, you know, discipline without buying a whole new set yeah. of crampons, right? And sure. so that's where yeah. Petzl has this um, switch system, it's called. And that's where basically you can go to the store. So let's say you got your links here and you're really getting into kind of the lightweight summer mountaineering, right? You could go to yeah. the store and you could just buy the Urbis front part. Right. right. And then you can just take the heel off like that. Take the spacer out for the bar, put it on here. And, you know, for a fraction of the cost, you can have an awesome lightweight summer mountaineering crampon. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's kind of a, a nice thing. So, you know, we'll sell the Urbis front part on its own. Yeah the Vasak, and this would be kind of the ultimate sort of, um, you know, alpine climbing crampon where, you know, you got scratchy mixed climbing and snow covered rock and little ice gullies, really durable, pretty yeah. lightweight. You know, we'll also sell the aluminum uh, pieces as well, like the heel and stuff like that. So if you wanted to switch those out and go like ultra light, like you're going to the bugaboos, right? And you can get away yeah. with, you know, a crampon that's like, partly aluminum or fully aluminum, you know, um, cause yeah. you just need it to go up the snowy BS call and then it's in your backpack. 
you can do that and it's really easy um, and economical, I guess. Great. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Economics wise, you know, like it might be hard for to throw a number out, but like, you know, compared to buying two or three pairs of crampons, like if I was to go with that set up and just buy the, you know, just the front components of it, like how much am I, what's my cost savings? Like what's, what's the benefit there? Yeah, good question. You know, you're going to save yourself, uh, you know, like 40%, um, you know, by just switching out the front portions and you just use the same heel because the heel is the same on all the crampons unless it's the aluminum one. Um, so yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's pretty good savings, 40%. Totally, yeah, for sure. You know, especially if you kind of like, you know, you're techie and you like to, you know, you want to kind of have like the perfect tool for the job, but yeah, you're also not made of money kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. Absolutely. totally. And then uh, a question that's come in uh, related to the clothing and related to like crampons, um, and it's probably, you know, two separate answers, but, you know, as far as maintenance goes um, for, let's say, washing these DOS parkas or washing the uh, Ascensionist Gore-Tex jacket, what would you recommend? And then, you know, as far as maintenance goes for, for crampons, like, we're, we're not going to give a, a sharpening clinic right now, but maybe just some, some quick tips on, you know, what you might do. Totally. So, yeah, for the clothing component first, you know, all of these, you um, new technologies that are out there. So these, um, you know, synthetic filet parkas, Gore-Tex or other kind of waterproof breathable fabrics, they really do work better when they're clean. Okay, and sometimes people are afraid, you know, they're like, oh, I'm gonna put my Gore-Tex in the wash and it's gonna just delaminate and be ruined, right? And that, that's not the case. That might've been the case, you know, 20 years ago, right? But now it's like, if you want your Gore-Tex jacket to uh, be breathing well, and to have that really good water beading on the outside where it just rolls off, you should, you should wash it often, okay? As soon as you notice that it looks kind of grimy or that the water is not beading up yeah. properly, um, you should wash it, you know? And the best thing to wash it uh, with is like a tech wash, you know? So there's, um, you know, the company Nick Wax or Grangers and they're at your local store. Um, you can buy one specifically for waterproof breathable shells and you can also buy specific for kind of um, insulated pieces. And the reason those work so good is because they don't leave any residue on the outside or the inside, which can inhibit okay. that kind of water beating and the breathability. Um, you know, if it's like fleece and, and stuff like that, it's, it's a bit less important, you know, but for these like tech pieces, yeah. just keep them clean, uh, put them in the dryer. So that durable water repellent treatment that's on the outside that makes the water beat up, uh, it's heat activated. Okay, so actually just throwing it in the dryer makes it kind of like pop back up and work a lot better. So wash Great it, on. dry it, don't be afraid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You hear that, kids? It's important to keep your stuff clean. Who would have thought? Keep your stuff clean, all right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, in the crampon world, um, it's pretty simple. The number one thing is when you get home at the end of the day, take your crampons out of the crampon bag, open them up, you know, flip them over and let them dry out. Okay, crampons are made of yeah. steel for the most part. There are uh, some stainless steel ones out there and uh, it's not great for them to rust, you know? So dry them out and then keep them sharp is a big thing. So yeah. go to the hardware store and just get yourself, you know, a little file, um, you know, like, uh, you know, just like your standard file. It doesn't have to be anything special. And, um, you know, the best way to sharpen is um, to kind of look at a pair that's, newish or, or new maybe and if your points are yeah. all mangled and rounded just try and get it so that it looks like the newer one you know and if yeah, you yeah. keep them sharp especially when you're you're on you know kind of ice where you're not front pointing you're walking right um, yeah. but it gets steeper it really makes a big difference for like the security of, of you know you just your footing kind of thing so keep, uh, keep them sharp keep them yeah. dry is okay yeah, and then sharpening wise, you know, just the front points or should I sharpen, you know, what, what are the main ones I should keep sharp in your opinion? Yeah, so um, if you don't have time to do all of them, um, you know, because you're, uh, you know, whatever, you don't have like uh, 45 minutes to, to hang out, um, I would definitely keep the front points sharp, the secondary points, because those are ones that will, you know, touch the ice when you're front pointing as well. And then I'll keep the yeah. heels at the very back sharp, because when you're yeah. walking down slope, you know, yeah. 
that those heel points are really piercing the ice and providing a lot of security. Yeah. And then, you know, every once in a while, you know, every few months or once a season, I'll do the full sit down, you know, you crack a beer, put some music on and, you know, you do all of them kind of thing. Or at the start of the season, maybe, you know? Totally. Yeah. yeah. We, have, we, have, we have Drew over at AM, who's a master. And he keeps those things razor sharp for, totally. for everybody. Yeah. He's probably good at it. He should do a sharpening clinic. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's on the list. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I know uh, ski season's coming up. And there's a lot of, I mean, I, I think back to, um, you know, when I first started learning about crevasse rescue and, you know, carrying a bunch of pressed cord and a pile of beaners and trying to always pare that stuff down to be as light as possible, but still be able to carry out an effective crevasse rescue. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of new fun stuff happening with that. I mean, if I even just look at the way I rack up these days compared to the way I did even five years ago, it's dramatically lighter. And a lot of my systems have changed as well, right? So, um, you know, quick yam plug here, but we, we are doing a, a crevasse, uh, one day crevasse rescue course that is actually designed for um, ski mountaineers. We also do one in, in the summertime as well for crevasse rescue for the alpinists, sort of demonstrating these new products and um, what you're going to show today, you know, we have a bunch of those here and, and that's what we're teaching on our courses now. So when people show up for these courses at YAM, um, they get to try out, you know, the micro traction and, you know, we don't have red lines, but we definitely, we talk about that, but I'll let you show, show that stuff. Um, and yeah, that this is all, I think this is super exciting. Actually, this is, uh, this is, this is really good. Totally. So, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, good point. So nowadays, you know, we have a lot of, we have access to a lot of tools that can, you know, make our crevasse rescue set up a, a, lot, a lot simpler, right, to set up and then be like a lot more efficient, right? So even if you're like a smaller guy like me and I got to haul, you know, uh, a bigger guy, you know, or, or gal out, um, I can have a really efficient system. You know, one thing that I think is, you know, uh, almost essential for crevasse rescue kits for kind of the modern adventurer um, would be a micro traction. And um, what this is, is it's a progress capture pulley. Okay, so if you flip it open, there's a pulley here. And what the pulley is doing is it's reducing friction. Okay, so it's increasing the efficiency of your system or making it easier, right? And um, the pulley that Petzl uses is, is pretty unique. It's 91% uh, efficient. So that's like really, really uh, efficient or low friction. And the bearings that are inside are sealed, okay? Um, which means that it's gonna um, stay very smooth for a long, long time, even if dirt and you know stuff gets in there. The other part yeah. of the progress capture pulley is the capture, okay? So that'd be this spring toothed cam here, which if I let go, right, it would pinch the rope. So that allows you to pull. And then when you wanna reset your haul, you, know, you can do that and it locks basically. Um, you know, it's pretty light. Uh, it doesn't weigh much more than like a, a locking carabiner. Um, it's pretty compact and it, it really, really just makes things uh, easy, you know, to set up and, uh, and a lot more efficient. It also works well for ascending the rope to get yourself out of a crevasse yeah. if you have to. Um, so that'd be, that'd be one that, you know, I think is, is important for, you know, to be part of like people's kit, I guess. Um, yeah. the other one that is an option is uh, something called the tip lock. And that's just this thing. In this instance, it's kind of tethered to this carabiner here. So when you're setting it up, you don't drop it. But again, this has some teeth in there, right? And it's also got a spring-loaded piece on the top that helps to keep the, the carabiner um, pushing against the rope and pushing it against the teeth. So, you know, this um, is like a miniature ascender, you know, or rope grab. And um, so that's something that you can use in the place of like a prusik cord um, to simplify things and just have like a really quick setup, you know? And, you know, with both of these things, um, I think it is super important to, um, to kind of, you know, take a course or, or learn somebody and like figure out exactly how to use them, to practice, you know, with some supervision, how to use them and also yeah. learn not how to use them, right? Yeah. Because there are instances where it's like, oh, you know what? Um, I shouldn't use this right or yeah. vice versa and so it does it's not a thing that 
I say you, you can just buy off the shelf, read the technical notice, which you should do anyway, um, and just go out. You know, you gotta you gotta take some time. But once you do that, you make your life a whole lot easier. You know, and it's good to practice. You know, with them often, kind of thing, because it's not like we do real life crevasse rescue very often, if at all, right? Yeah. So you gotta brush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, super. Uh, you know, that micro traction to me is, you know, I don't think I, there's not many scenarios where I think I would use a, a, you know, a different progress capture in a crevasse rescue scenario. Um, and, you know, the, the big game changer is, um, you know, if I think about it from a guiding application, if, if somebody's likely to go into the hole, it's probably going to be me. Yeah, and exactly. I, I want to be able to get myself out. And, you know, one thing that, uh, it's hard to be efficient at you can practice till you're blue in the face but pressing out of a crevasse is um strenuous and time consuming and um to be able to get yourself out of a crevasse if you're the one that goes in um in a in a really fast safe efficient manner the efficiency of that pulley and the micro traction is is game changing for me when it comes to ascending a rope totally. and uh yeah I can't recommend it enough for people and yeah, sign up for a course and, and learn how to use that stuff because, you know, totally. if, if you reverse load one of those things, you need to know how to escape it. And, yeah. you know, that can eat up a bunch of time and, and time counts when it comes to performing any form of rope rescue. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, another kind of one of these like more specialized tools um, that people can use is, um, this piece here, this is just a section of it, but um, this is called the rad line. And um, this is a pretty specialized thing. So it's only six millimeters diameter, right? And when you compare that to our normal climbing ropes that are like 9.5, something like that, um, it's very skinny, okay? But this is a specially constructed cord that has all, like a you know Kevlar Dyneema type material in the center. So it's really strong and then the sheath is woven so that it's actually quite um, rough, right? So that it has really good grab when you're grabbing onto it or when it's interacting with these um, devices like the micro traction. And, um, yeah. you know, so for like a pound, you can have a 30 meter section of rope, right? That just comes in a little stuff sack. And this can be deployed if you need to rescue somebody or if you need to do a short rappel or if you need to uh, take a belay, maybe to go check out a slope or do a little ski cut or something like that. Um, and it's light enough and compact enough that you know, you're always gonna bring it with you um, in, uh, in your backpack if you're gonna be on a glacier or doing that kind of like ski mountaineering type stuff there. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Again, Perfect. specialized piece of kit for sure. Um, this isn't really meant for like a beginner who's heading out you know, uh, onto the WAPTA for the first time or something like that. This is for like the, you know, the more advanced users taking some courses, they have a, like a base knowledge and they're like, okay, now I, you know, I kind of know enough and I know what I don't know that, um, you know, I can maybe look at something like this and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I carry one with me these days and been using it now for, I guess it'd be three winters and, um, I, I feel like even, you know, as a, as a, as a professional using this equipment, the rad line was something that, that took me a bit to wrap my, my head around for how I was going to best utilize it for, mm -hmm. for the way I wanted it to work for me in a guiding application. Um, and I feel like I got that stuff figured out now, but the first couple of times I, I took it out, it was a little bit of like a, you know, how can I best maximize this great new tool? Like it's saving me weight, number one, which is we're all so weight conscious these days, but mm -hmm. you know, how can I get longevity out of this, this rad line and, and how can I be, use it for, you know, the maximum efficiency for tying people into a rope on a glacier. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just as a, a, to kind of highlight the point, I guess, um, uh, you know, you can get this kit. And so this weighs two pounds, right. And inside yeah. you have the 30 meter rad line, you have three locking carabiners, a tib lock, a micro traction, and 120 centimeter sling. So all the things you would yeah. need to do are, uh, you know, a simple haul um, for two pounds, yeah. right? Which is pretty awesome for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Game changing, really. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And you know, it was kind of designed for, a good example is like you go skiing at Rogers Pass in March, 
right? And yeah. um, you're going to get up on the tour up onto the glaciers, and there's so much snow, and there's not really visible crevasses, and people aren't bringing ropes, right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, there are crevasses there, you know, and uh, maybe you get in, yourself into trouble. And, you know, if you have something that's this light and compact, you're more likely to have it with you. And yeah. uh, maybe one day, you know, knock on wood, you, you have to use it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, I, I would say it's, uh, it's rare these days that I, I would travel, you know, with this rad line, you know, travel on a glacier with without a rope, especially if it's, you know, there's one thing, you know, when it comes to local knowledge and terrain familiarity, but, but if I'm heading out to a new zone that I, I've never been before, um, you know, I'll definitely seek out local knowledge. But to me, you know, the first few times I'm out on that glacier, putting the rope on, you know, when you say <laughs> the whole kill comes there, it's like, it's nothing and it could save your bacon one day. So totally. yeah. Yeah. You never really get a second chance to fall into a crevasse on rope is, is the way I think about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which uh, would not be good times. Yeah. <laughs> no, would not be good times. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I don't know how are we for for time. Uh, is there? Uh... Yeah, you know, we're we're getting pretty close to our, to forty five minutes. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you got any? That was anything else exciting over there? I mean, yeah. there's lots of exciting stuff. That was. I could I could go down the the rabbit hole, you know, but uh. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, awesome. Um, I mean, we can just wrap it up, and I'll ask one more time if anybody has any questions for Jay or I. Now would be the time to to post, and we'll we'll answer them, you know, in the next couple of minutes while we're wrapping up. Um, but uh, yeah, lots going on um, with you guys. Lots going on with us over here. Um, you know, an interesting winter coming, coming up with, with COVID and everything else. And, um, you know, we have a bunch of new programs up on our YAM site. If anybody's curious to go check those out, um, reach out to us. Um, lots of day skiing options, um, lots of single rescue days for skiers, um, navigation courses. Um, we've got a one day backcountry companion rescue refresher course that we're doing. And then all of our AST stuff is up online now. We're doing in-class sessions with that stuff. And we're also doing webinar stuff as well. Um, but uh, lots of day skiing options, lot, lots of options out there. So, so check it out. I think, you know, my personal feeling is the backcountry is going to be a, a pretty busy place this winter, um, you know, yeah. with everything going on out there. And uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, definitely time to... To sort of switch gears and, and go into winter mode and it's great to see all this this new stuff coming out as well it's, it's awesome yeah for sure yeah you know it's um yeah it's uh a great you know working with uh with yam and all the guides and um you know kind of uh you know outfitting all the guests um with with the latest kit and stuff like that um you know if, if anybody's out there who um yeah is interested in just kind of more um you know, more tech knowledge and that, and that kind of thing, um, you can head over to onwardup.com slash campus. And that's where we kind of share um, info about, um, you know, new technologies and, um, you know, trips that we've done and stuff like that. And um, there's lots of cool, yeah, videos and, um, you know, good learning to be had uh, online there. So check it out. Yeah, right. On. Cool. Yeah, thanks. And the, the Petzl website I find is a good resource as well with all the tech tips and everything on that that website. There's a ton of okay. good information there. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a ton. Um, every single product that Petzl makes um, has a technical notice, what's called, and that's a uh, basically like your starting point for understanding what that that uh, piece is used for, um, things not to do with it, uh, limitations, and that kind of thing. So that's all on the website. And then there's really in depth information about um, Things like crevasse rescue systems, rad line, micro traction, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Right on. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for your time today, buddy. It was uh, a pleasure hanging out socially here over uh, Zoom. Totally. That's um, fun. <laughs> yeah. One of these days, catch up for a cold one. Totally. Yeah. Sounds good. Until then, you know, pray for snow, but not quite yet. Not till October 30th or November 1st. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another, another three or four weeks of. October would be fantastic to get a exactly. nice more rock on. Yeah, yeah, totally. Awesome. All right, take care, thanks. man. Thanks for everything, buddy. We'll chat soon. And thanks for everybody for joining in. And you can still post questions below. Um, we'll answer the questions. And um, yeah, our guide talk series is going to kick back in here um, throughout uh, November and rolling into December. 
and then uh, we'll start doing um, some more uh, some more snow talks as to what's happening with the snowpack when we roll into December, and then uh, we'll be chatting with some of our other partners as well about the the latest greatest gear with uh, what K two is doing with their skis and um, what Dynafit's got going on with uh, with some of their stuff as well. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Play safe out there, and uh, yeah, drop us a line anytime. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.